Hey you, today we're gonna to be talking about how to list products on Etsy. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of creating a product listing and show you how to optimize that listing so you make the most sales. If you're new to Etsy and just getting started, or if you have your Etsy shop and you're just not making the amount of sales that you wanna make, you wanna stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to Healthy Wealthy Skinny, where we focus on the steps to help you live a healthy, wealthy, and skinny life. I'm Sean, and if you are ready to start thriving and not just surviving, go ahead and hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get a notification every week when I drop a new video. And be sure to stay until the very end because, as always, I've got something special for you. If you haven't already set up your Etsy shop, I recommend that you watch my Etsy tutorial video. I'll leave a link to it in the card above me. It will walk you step by step through the process of creating your Etsy shop and give you 40 free listings so you can get your shop set up and post your first 40 listings for free. I recommend that you watch that video before this one because in this video you need to have your shop already set up and be ready to create product listings. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to switch over to my laptop view so I can walk you step by step through the process. We're going to start out on the listings tab in the shop manager. If you don't know how to get there, it's on the left hand menu. You can see here shop manager and if you go down one, two, three icons, you'll see the listings tab. So we're going to click on that and you should be in your listings area. So this is inside of my Etsy shop and I have a lot of listings here. Yours may be blank if you're just getting started or you may already have a few listings already set up. But we're going to start from this area and we're going to add a new listing. We're going to do that by clicking on the add a listing button over here on the top right side. There's a black button with a plus icon and it says add a listing. And this is where you should see your 40 free listings if you use my link or if you used any other affiliate link to get started on Etsy. You, could, you should see your 40 listings here. But we're just going to click on this button which is going to allow us to start a new listing. This is going to take you to the add a listings page. The first thing you're going to do when you're adding your listing is add your photos. This is a very important part of your listing. You want to add as many photos as you can. It is good if you can fill in all of these slots showing your product or the thing that you're selling from a lot of different angles and Etsy kind of gives you a hint here. They say your primary photo, every angle, every angle, show some details, show the product in use, show the size and scale, style scheme, and variations. So Etsy is just kind of giving you a hint here to add as many photos as you can. So here I am going to add my photos. Now when I first set up my listings, I usually don't have all the photos I need, but I go ahead and set it up and get started and I come back and add photos a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and click add a photo. And it's going to open up this directory on my laptop and I am going to create a listing for my content creator shirt. And in this listing, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I am not going to create a separate listing for my t-shirts, my hoodies, and my sweatshirts. I'm going to put them all in one listing this time. So I am going to choose this, the content creator white sweatshirt um, file first and click OK. And then I'm going to go and choose the rest of my photos because I'm not sure which one I want to use as the thumbnail. I'm going to add the photos first and then go down here and adjust the thumbnail. And the thumbnail is the photo that shows in the Etsy search listing. So this is going to be your main photo for your listing. So it needs to be your best photo. So I'm just going to choose a few more. I know that this is one. I am going to choose, I think I've done the sweatshirt. All right, how about the black tee? All 
Okay, so we're gonna start with those. So I have a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, and a hoodie. And I'll say I'll go with the hoodie as my main image. And now I'm just going to adjust the thumbnail. So I'm gonna click the adjust thumbnail button here. And you see it's gonna let me zoom in and zoom out and kind of position my image the way I want it to show on my listing. So I'm gonna go in and I like when you can see a lot of the image and it just so happens on this image I have my logo I'm going to I don't want that cut off so I'm gonna position it like this so now I can see her face she's smiling and I can see the hoodie and I can see the the logo that's on the hoodie or the wording that says content creator I'm good with that so I'm just gonna go save and you can see my edits are made and this is how my listing is going to appear on Etsy. All right, now I usually have some supporting images that I add to my listings and I'm going to go and choose those right now. I'm going to go t-shirt shop images and this is just my way of staying organized. I have size charts and color char charts. So I'm going to pick a size chart and since I'm going to add my t-shirts, my hoodies, and my sweatshirts in this listing, I'm going to use multiple size charts. So I'm going to choose the size chart for my sweatshirt and let that add. Then I'm going to choose the size chart for my hoodies. Now let me get the t-shirts. And that'll be this one. And then I'm going to choose the side chart, size chart for my hoodies. And I think it is this one. No, that's t-shirts again. Okay, so I'm going to go and find the one for my hoodie later. Let me try one more time. I'm not sure where I have it. So I know that's sweatshirts. That's Bella. Uh, sweatshirts. Okay, so my organization is off right now, and I'll need to go in and find my size chart for my hoodie. So I'm going to cancel, and I'll find that later. If you're doing apparel and you use Gildan or Bella Canvas or Next Level shirts and hoodies or sweatshirts, you can go on Etsy and find these mockups of the these mockups of size charts already done for you. They're usually pretty really pretty cheap, a dollar fifty, five dollars, but they'll save you a lot of time. Um, I you can go and create your own in Canva, but again, if you're looking for something really quick they're pretty cheap on Etsy just do a search and you'll find them so we've got size charts I usually add a color chart as well let's go back and for the sake of this listing I'm gonna just go with my fall colors because those are usually the ones that I add to the listings and I created my color charts on my own and they're really easy to do using Canva or Photoshop and I usually have a another supporting image that just talks about my um, mailing list and I use one for Christmas when there's a cutoff time before orders um, so they can get shipped by Christmas but it is April now so I won't add that on this listing I'll go back and add it later and I'll go ahead and put the one where people can join my mailing list and get a discount okay so I've got some supporting documents here and you guys can see I have three spots left and I'll go in and I'll add maybe the t-shirt in white with black writing might add a different color for the hoodie and the sweatshirt as well so you you can see how it's pretty easy for me to fill in all of these slots again I'll go back and do those later all right so we've got the photos now we're gonna scroll down and Etsy gives you an option to add a video to your listing 
this is also really powerful because it's pretty new on Etsy and if you know anything about platforms or if you've watched platforms anytime a platform puts out something new then they're gonna favor it in their search algorithms so if you have a video of your product that you can add in it's great to add it again for me I always go in and add this later for I will do something like show myself folding the hoodie or packaging the hoodie or holding the hoodie or the sweatshirt up so people can see it and that is the video that I add here when you do your video remember that it's only 5 to 15 seconds so think TikTok style really cute and fast and there's no sound so don't record a video where you're talking about the product you need to let what you're doing in the video speak for itself and on Etsy the Etsy buyers really just want to see what that product is so you can go ahead and add a video I don't have one ready so I am going to skip it for this one and continue alright so now we're in the nitty-gritty we're in the listing details the first item in this section is your title and your title is very very important you can see here it says include keywords that buyers would use to search for your item so if I am going to list a t-shirt or sweatshirt or hoodie and it says content creator I wouldn't want to just name this content creator because someone searching for something on Etsy might not search for content creator so we want to put in keywords words that someone would put in if they were searching for the item in Etsy so the way I usually start out doing this is I will type what I want to call this item so I'm going to type content creator shirt right and now I'm going to think about what someone might use, what words someone might use to search for this. So they might be a blogger. Or they might be a YouTuber. Or they might be an influencer. Right? And you can see here right now I am just brainstorming. I'm trying to figure out what someone might search for if they are searching for a shirt with content creator on it. Or what that person might like. Because they might be searching around Etsy and not know that they are looking for this type of shirt specifically. Another thing that I like to do is I like to go on Etsy and just do a search and see what comes up. So I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to go to Etsy. And then I'm just going to type content creator. And I usually start with just what it is and see what comes up. And see here, I've got a few shirts. I've got one that says content creator. Don't forget to hit the bell notifications. Content creator here. So we've got a few shirts that are in the realm of what I'm looking for. And so let's, let's pick this one. And I usually try not to pick the ads because on Etsy, I know the Etsy sellers are... I'm paying for these ads and I don't want to cost them any money if I'm just researching that so I try to be um, cognizant of that and I don't want people just clicking on my ad so I don't do that to other people so let's just click on this one that says content creator all right here and you can see how in this listing it says content creator shirt influencer we have that down t-shirt vlogger shirt social media t social media t social media t and t-shirt spelled different ways a crew neck shirt and aesthetic t-shirt right so that gives us some good ideas of keywords that we can use another great trick 
about keywords. Now we knew once we put in content creator shirt, this listing came up. So we know it is optimized for content creator. So we're gonna scroll down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom of the page and look at where Etsy says explore related searches. So here, these are all great, great, great keywords to use in your titles and in your tags. Now we haven't gotten to the tags yet, but we're gonna go there next or as we keep going and you'll see what I mean. So content creator is a good keyword. Influencer is a good keyword. Crew neck, oversized t-shirt, influencer shirt, influencer t-shirt, shirt, t-shirt, of course. Now I'm not sure how Disney shirts, unisex adult clothing, tops and tees, these are real, these are real generic and Disney shirts doesn't really apply so I wouldn't put that and then you can look down even further and we've got clothing this peachy lemonade press that is this actual listing so we wouldn't want to use that vlogger shirt social media t-shirt tiktoker and t-shirts all of these are great keywords so we're going to use these in our title so I think we already have content creator um, I think we have influencer I N F L U E N C E R and I usually try to check my spelling because I am horrible with spelling oh, clicking on the wrong thing okay um, we're gonna go back to the listing I like a vlogger shirt and I also like social media so I'm gonna put that in here And you can see how I'm alternating the way I put the word shirt. So here I've got shirt, vlogger, I might put T, T E E, YouTuber, influencer, vlogger, I got shirt again, social media, I've got T shirt. So just a different way someone might put a shirt. Now, again, in this one, I am going to do. Um, my hoodies and my sweatshirts and my t-shirts in the same listing so I think I might add those here so I, behind youtuber I might put sweatshirt and then behind influencer I might put hoodie so you see how I'm just trying to put in all the keywords I can into this title and there's a count a counter here which tells me how many characters I have left and I usually try to fill in all of the characters because I want my listing to be as searchable as possible and adding keywords in your title is just a way for you to optimize your listing so let's go back and finish adding in keywords I'm gonna go back to my listing at the bottom and We've got influencer already in there and you don't need to repeat words. So you see how I have influencer here, influencer shirt, influencer t-shirt. I've got influencer so I don't need to keep repeating that. Let's see, um, I think I added vlogger. Let's see if I did social media t-shirt and this is T space shirt. So. Oh, okay, so I have social media. Let's do T-Space shirt here. All right, I've got social media. I don't have TikToker. Let's do that one. All right, so we've got a lot of keywords. I still have a little bit of space here, so I'll leave that in case I think of some more things. But I, again, I wanna put all of the keywords I can put in this title. So I'm gonna go with that for now. And usually more keywords come to me and I move things around, but I think this looks pretty good from now. So what you wanna do again is think about your product and think about the keywords that someone's gonna to use to search for them. I cannot stress that enough because it's very important for you to be found in SD search because that is how you're going to make your money. People have to find your listing in order for you to make a sale. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to about this listing 
and who made it click on the drop down I made it so I'm gonna choose I did or I make it um, what is it for me mine is a finished product but you can choose a finished product or a supply or tool to make things so mine is a finished product and then when did you make it you have some options here it can be recently vintage I make my shirts to order so I'm gonna choose made to order okay that was pretty simple and next we're gonna go to category and I'm gonna go back a little bit so you can see based on the selections that I made Etsy is saying this item is handmade and it is all right so next I'm gonna do a category and choosing your category you basically just type two or three words that describe what you're selling so I'm gonna do I'm gonna say a shirt and you see you can have shirts in t-shirts shirts in graphic tees shirts in t-shirts tops and tees that's about the same thing shirts and graphic things so I usually just choose the one that's closest to what I am selling so I'm gonna do shirts in t-shirts tops and tees and you see how it gives me these categories clothing men's clothing shirts and tees t-shirts women clothing and tops and tees so these are the suggestions that it's using and that is okay for my listing and I'm gonna go with that when you're doing yours again just start typing in what you're selling if you're selling um, planters or if you're selling knit blankets or whatever just start typing in that and Etsy's gonna suggest a category for you now I'm gonna scroll down and now we have size and it says optional to optimize my listings I usually try to fill in all of these optional um, selections some of them don't necessarily apply if it's too far off I'll skip it but I usually try to fill them in so I'm gonna choose the scale and I always think this is really weird because if you're selling a ladies item the option here is always men's but we're just gonna go ahead and choose it and you can see how men's clothing is here but women's clothing is also here so I'm not quite sure why the listings always give you a size for men but I just choose it and I say I offer more than one right so just giving you a lot of options then primary color for me I sell my t-shirts in multiple colors so what I do is I usually pick one a lot of times I go with a black or red or, or anything and this just these options come into play when a person uses the filters that are on Etsy so if someone says that I'm specifically looking for a black shirt then this primary color will help them in that case so again just to increase my chances I go in and I choose a primary and a secondary color so I'm gonna go black and then I'll probably make my secondary color white next we've got clothing style and again this is optional and then these options are showing up because I chose this category if you're saying that you're selling something that is not clothing then you won't get this option so I'm just gonna say mine is I usually like to choose um, I'm gonna choose athletic this time sometimes I choose athletic sometimes I choose streetwear I go back and forth now here we've got occasion and it is optional and for a content creator shirt it really doesn't fit any of the occasions here so I might leave this one as blank but I have let's say I have a lot of birthday shirts so I have a sweet 16 shirt so I will choose this one if I'm um, doing something let's say that's for a birthday party or group shirts like for a bachelorette party I'll choose that but not in every case there's not an occasion that'll fit so I'm gonna leave that one blank for this and same thing with holiday I have a lot of shirts that are Christmas shirts or Father's Day shirts so these really fit Mother's Day shirts I have an Etsy vlog where I did shirts that where I show where I was creating shirts for Valentine's Day and those fit but again in this case 
there's no holiday option that fits a content creator shirt so I'm just gonna leave that one blank now for sleeve length in this one um, again I have t-shirts hoodies and sweatshirts in here so I'm gonna pick one and I'm just gonna go with short sleeve first because I can't pick multiple but again once the person is on the listing if they find a listing in another way where they aren't just searching by sleeve length then they'll see the other options and then again, neckline, I'm going to choose crew. Okay, now we're up to the renewal options. And this is how you're going to renew your listing. Whenever you sell an item, your listing has to be renewed. Or if the period for that listing expires or that listing expires, then it has to be renewed. And you can choose to whether you want your listing to renew automatically, meaning that when they when the listing expires, Etsy will automatically renew it, charge you your 20 cent or use one of your free listings or manual, meaning that you'll have to go in when the listing expires and put it back yourself. For me, I have all I have a lot going on. I don't have a time to look for my listings that expire and do them manually so I always choose automatic and again that is completely up to you it's, it's just based on how you feel about it so choose automatic which is recommended or manual next you have to choose the type of item it is whether it is a physical item something that someone can hold or a digital item I have both physical items and digital items in my Etsy shop this one right now we're talking about a t-shirt a hoodie or a sweatshirt so of course it is a physical item and so I'm gonna choose physical and your options from this point on will change depending on whether it is a physical item or a digital item so you'll need to choose the right option here next we have where you get a description or where you add a description of your item and I usually describe my items in a very similar fashion so what I usually do is go in and I go to one of my other listings copy and I paste so I can keep my shop looking very symmetrical or identical or just uh, so I can just keep my shop looking the same, my listings looking the same. So I am just going to go and find one of my listings and do a copy and a paste. So I'm going to find me. All right. So here's my Etsy shop and I'm doing a content creator shirt. So let's see which one I'm going to choose. I'll just I'll just choose anything. So I'll go to this graduation shirt and choose this one. And again, you can see my keywords here: graduation shirt, done, class of 2021, class of 2021 shirt, senior T-shirt. Just not another example of how you can do your keywords. And I am going to the piece that I want is this description. So I use the same description on all of my shirts. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to copy and paste. Alright, so let's go to our listing and I'm going to paste that in. And in my description, and I've seen really short descriptions and I've seen long descriptions like I'm using. I really like just telling my buyers everything about the shirt. I tell them what types of shirts I use, what blanks I use. I use Bella and Canvas and Next Level and tell them a little bit about the shirt, how to choose a size, how to choose a color, how to place an order, when to expect your order, processing time, and things like that. Again, you can do what you like here. I would just be, say be descriptive and allow the buyer to read and know all about your product and it also helps if you add keywords in the description section as well so all of this looks good I know I'm using that because I'm copy and pasting and that is my description so I'm going to move forward 
Next, you have production partners. If you have someone that is a part of your Etsy shop that helps you make your products, you can add them here as a production partner. I do not. Next, we have a section, and this is another thing that's optional. And the sections just allow you to organize your shop. So I'm going to go back to my Etsy shop so I can show you what the sections look like. If we go back to the main page of my Etsy shop and I scroll down, here are the sections here. So you can see I have a section for my finance printables, my cash envelopes, I have general t-shirts, and then I have things like Halloween t-shirts or Christmas t-shirts, birthday shirts. So a way for me to just section off my shop. As my shop has grown, my sections have grown. I started out with maybe just the t-shirt section and just a hoodie section. But once I started getting multiple birthday shirts, I figured it's an easy way for a person to go in and see just those birthday shirts. So this is what the sections look like. So for this shirt, let's see, I would probably, let me see, I have... It's not Mother's Day, Christmas. I would normally put it in t-shirts or hoodies. Again, I'm going to try a listing where I'm putting it in multiple places. So we're going to start off, and I'm just going to put it in the t-shirts section. So I go here, and the sections that I already have set up show up in the drop-down. And you see how if it says couldn't find a section so if you don't have a section that meets your needs here you can say add a section so right now I'm just going to choose t-shirts but if you don't have any sections of course you need to select add a section and name your section okay next we have tags and tags says optional but they are very, very, very important. They are how people find your listing. Remember when we looked at this listing and we scrolled all the way down to the bottom? These are keywords that you would want to put in your tags. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of these. I'm going to do the same thing I did with my title. So content creator, we know we want that one. And you can put in 13 tags, and I recommend for the most optimized listing that you use all 13 of your tags. So content creator, we're gonna go um, influencer. We're gonna go um, TikToker. I remember seeing that one. We sell social media. I'm going to go back and look again. Um, we see crew neck and oversize. Oh, vlogger shirt. Let's go with that one. All right, so um, I'm gonna go blogger shirt. And these are some that I don't see at the bottom of that listing, but ones that I wanna add. So I'm gonna go YouTuber, because YouTubers, vloggers, videographers, those are all content creators. So they might be interested in this shirt. Um, I'm going to say, I've got social media in here. Let's go Instagram, Instagrammer gift, something like that. And I don't know if Instagrammer is a real word. <laughs> I'm going to add that here, but I'm just going to, just in case. Um, I've got TikToker. Let's go tick talk shirt. Right? 
So I've got two left. Um, sometimes I do things like if I don't have, if I can't think of any more keywords, I'll go, um, this might be a good shirt for teen, teen gift. And I might go women's shirt, right? So it's just me trying to use all of my tags. A lot of times I'll go back and think of better tags, but again, let's go with these. So we've got our content creator covered, we've got our influencer covered, TikTokers, social media, vloggers, it's crew neck, blogger shirt, uh, YouTuber, Instagrammer, Instagram, TikTok, teen, and women. So we're gonna go with that. And then you can also add materials so if you use certain materials to create your shirts, so for me, a lot of times I will use vinyl on my shirts, but for this shirt, it's not vinyl. I use screen printed transfers. So I'm gonna say screen print here. Just anything that'll help the buyer know what your item is made out of. And on this one, you have 12 um, options. But on this one, not as important that you use all 12, just you put what you need. So I'm just going to go screen print here to let the buyer know that this is screen print um, and not vinyl. Okay, now we're down to your inventory and your pricing. So here, I'm going to have my pricing is going to vary based on the variation. And my variations, I'm going to use style, which is going to be whether you want a t-shirt, a hoodie, or a sweatshirt. And... I'm going to use color. So I'm going to start off with the price for my t-shirts and just put $24. Quantity, the, if you are keeping a stock, if you have stock of your product, you can put that here. It is hard for me to keep stock on my shirts because I keep blank shirts and then I create whatever I need to create out of those shirts. So I could use a small Heather Brown for any number of shirts in my stock in my shop. So keeping stock is kind of hard. So what I do is I usually just make this 999 and it's just going to count down and keep auto renewing so I don't have to worry about me selling out of this item. But if you create unique handmade things where you only have five of that thing in stock, definitely put the right quantity here. And then we have SKUs. I also use SKUs. You may not, and this is totally just for you. I use a, another tool to track my inventory and to ship things out. I use ShipStation. And when I'm in ShipStation, the SKUs really help me. So I'm going to go ahead and add a SKU here. But again, you do not have to do this. And actually, I'm going to add my SKUs to my individual variations because, again, I'm doing a lot of different kinds and one listing. So I'm going to go in and add my variations. I'm going to click Add Variations. Now, what I'm going to do here is not use the size variation that Etsy adds because then they're going to give me those wonky men sizes. So I'm going to hit Delete here. And then I'm going to say that I'm going to create a new variation and then I'm going to call it size and hit add and then it's going to let me name my sizes myself so I'm going to go small add I'm going to do medium and I like caps here at large at extra large 2x oops 2x 3x and 4x okay so now I have my sizes here now I've got some options here prices vary for each size quantity vary for each size SKUs vary for each size so for me my prices vary and my SKUs vary so I'm gonna check those blocks and then another variation is color or style. 
I am thinking, the, as I keep moving, I'm thinking I am probably just going to make this my t-shirt listing just to make things easier and not group them, even though I really want to. I'm going back and forth on that. But for the sake of this video, let's make it simple. And next I'm going to do color. And again, I don't like it when mine says primary color or secondary color. I really just want it to say color. So I'm going to create a variation. Don't want it all caps. Okay. And I'm going to add. Now I have these same options. Prices vary for each color. Quantities vary. Skews vary. And I do not vary my prices, quantities, or SKUs by color. So I'm going to leave those blank and then just add in my colors. So I know I want to carry this in white and black for now. There's a sand color that I'd like to carry it in but sand is never in stock <laughs> right now. I am gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add the sand in and I will just make it show as out of stock because I, I know I wanna carry that color. So I'm gonna go white, black, and sand. So again, when you are creating your listings, your sizes, your colors, or your variations might be different than mine, but as you can see, Etsy will allow you to use some of their pre-configured variation titles, or you can create your own. So I'm just going to go update here. And you can see here, it's letting me add my SKUs and add my prices because I said that they vary based on um, based on size. So I'm going to go back and look at one of my other listings. Let's go back and I want to use that same shirt that I used before. If I can find it. And of course now I don't see it. I used this senior shirt right here. Same thing. And just looking at it and making sure I make my prices match. And you can see here I can see my prices. So on the 2x I go to 26, 28, and 30. I always have to take a look at that. So I know I want this to be $26, 28, dollars and $30. And these are all 24. Okay, so now I have my prices in and I will go ahead and do my SKUs. It's a T E E. That tells me it's a t shirt. Um, I'm going to put this in my small business kind of category, SBO. And then I usually do what kind of uh, abbreviation or four characters, what kind of shirt it is. Um, so I'll do C O C R. Sorry. Content creator. And you can, when you're doing SKUs, it could be anything you want it to be, anything that makes sense to you. But when I see this SKU, it needs to be something where I automatically understand what the shirt is just by looking at the SKU. And so A-T-E-E -E is like an adult tee. If I do hoodies, I do hood. If I do sweatshirts, I do S-W-T. So just something that I made up for my system. Again, whatever works for you. Or you can not do SKUs at all. And that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to just copy these down. And then I'm going to change the sizes. So I'm going to go, that's my medium. That's my large. My extra large. My 2x. 
my 3x and my 4x. Now I will say things like the SKU, not very important to Etsy search and optimizing your listings, but they will be very important when you start making a lot of sales. If you're doing very unique handmade things where you're going to make just a few at a time, again, I think not very important. For me, the more my shop scales up and the more t-shirts I sell, it is very important to me when I'm trying to keep track of things and look at reporting that I have SKUs so I can see exactly what's selling and it allows me to save some of my shipping settings inside of ShipStation. So the SKUs are very important to me, especially when it comes to the different sizes because the shirts weigh different things. So again, not the topic of this video, but when you're first starting out, if you're doing apparel or anything like that, I will say go ahead and set up your SKU system early so you don't have to go back and do it later for a whole lot of project products. So just saving you some time. All right, so I'm going to scroll down and then we have colors. And again, there's no variations or SKU changes based on the color. So those are there and they are fine. Now we have personalization. So if this was a shirt that someone could personalize, put their name on, tell me they want a different color, things of that nature, I would turn personalization on. So you definitely need to do that if you have a personal listing. I have a lot of them out there that I do allow to be personalized, but this one is just content creator, so it's standard. So I do not need to turn my personalization on. Next, I'm going to go down to shipping and in the shipping area, you can see here, I have a lot of predefined shipping options set up. You will need to set up your shipping options and I don't want to go too deep into that because that is a lot. It's really going to depend on how you want to ship, whether you're shipping domestic or internationally. It's your processing time, how long you are going to take to make your item. It is where you're shipping from, your zip code. All of that goes into these different shipping options or shipping profiles. And for me, I have some pre-set up. So I have a certain profile for my shirt orders, non-shirt orders, hoodies, aprons, because it takes me a different amount of time to do different things. So that's why I have so many options. But again, this is a shirt order. I do them in one to three business days and I have free shipping for domestic orders and all of that set up and I'm just gonna choose this option. If you guys want me to do a video where I go deep into the different shipping options and shipping profiles and how to set all of this up, leave me a comment in the comment section and I will definitely do that video. So I'm going to scroll past that and then you're going to put the weight of you of your item. Now I normally just use 11 ounces for t-shirts. They will sometimes be a little um, not higher than that but lower than that. But if a person has to let's say if it's a international order and they have to pay for their shipping I don't want to choose um, that the shirt weighs 5 ounces and it's a shirt that weighs you know eight ounces and they don't pay enough so I want to make sure I get that and I usually just adjust that when I'm processing the order and then we're gonna go down and it is item size when it's packed so this is the size of the poly mailers or whatever you're gonna use to ship your items and I use my poly mailers are 13 by 10 and by and one because they're pretty flat so that is just a standard size poly mailer that you can use for t-shirts. And I use that same one for hoodies and sweatshirts. Um, one will fit in that size. And again, if they order multiple, then I change it. But again, you, handle, you can handle all of that when you're doing shipping. So you'll need to figure out the standard box size or poly mailer or whatever you're going to use to ship out your items and put those measurements there. And you have your length, your width, and your height. And just keep in mind that your length is always the longest side of the item. The other is the width. And of course, how tall it is, is going to be your height. So you get that in. And then you can see a preview of the shipping price. And when someone orders from you, Etsy will 
try to give them a calculation of what it's going to cost them to have it shipped. So from my location in Duluth, Georgia, to someone ordering something in Chicago, you know, it's going to say free shipping here. But let's say if I wasn't offering free shipping, it would tell them it's going to cost you $3.46 to ship. And that's using first class mail. And then it will give the total price. So just a, a glimpse into what your customer is going to see. Right. Let me scroll down. And then Etsy is also going to... Um, give you a little plug to tell you if you use their shipping labels you're gonna sell I mean you're gonna save money you're gonna um, save a dollar and 48 cents if you went to USPS and bought that label over the counter so just a little plug there to let you know and then last but not least you have the marketing section and this is where you say whether you want this listing to be included in your Etsy ads campaign and I do have an Etsy ads campaign running so I might say yes, and if I don't want it included in that campaign, I would say maybe later. So for this shirt is content creator, I think I do want it included in my campaign. I usually add my new listings into my campaign and see how they do. And if they're not um, taking up too much money or um, if they don't have a lot of search volume, I might take them out. So, But I usually put them in there to start off and just see how it's gonna go and adjust later. There is an area in your marketing area you can go in right over here and adjust that. So now that is it. We're at the end of this listing and I'm just going to scroll up before we hit publish and just check a few things. And again, my important things, I wanna make sure my images are nice, clear, and I have a good amount of images in. And again, I will go back and add more. I want to make sure my thumbnail is exactly how I want it and adjust it. Another thing that's very important is my title. Now, I do see something I want to change here. And this is just totally for my aesthetic. When I do my titles, instead of dashes, I usually do this line. So I want all of my listings to look alike. So I'm going to add this line in here. For my research, it doesn't matter which one you do. If anyone has found that the dash does better than the line, definitely let me know. I just usually like the way the line looks better. And I also have this thing. I have two Etsy shops. And on one of my shops, I use the line. The other one, I use a dash. And when I see my listings, I can tell right off which shop it is by how I put it in here. So I'm going to do that. And again, this title is a bit short for me. I'm going to go and do some more keyword research. I do have Etsy keyword research tools that I use, and I'll probably do a whole video on that. So I'll usually go to one of those tools, or I'll probably go to one of those tools, do some research so I can clean this up and fill this out a little bit more. But for you, I want you to think of all of the keywords that you can think of for your item and put them in this title till this number goes to zero. Okay, so I'm good with that. And the next thing I want to check is my tags because that's most another very, very important thing when it comes to being found in search. And I've used up all 13 of my tags, so I'm good there. And I think I am now good to post. So I'm going to scroll down, and you can see here you can preview, save as a draft, or publish so let's say you come in here and you can't fill in everything in one sitting and when you first get started that will be the case a lot so don't worry about that you can always save as a draft and save your place and come back and add things later but I think this is good so I am going to hit publish it's gonna tell me I'm about to publish a new listing this will use one of my 2165 free listings so I'm okay with that. If you don't have any free listings, it's going to tell you that it's going to cost you 20 cents. And it's going to tell you the publication date will reset to today's date and the listing will expire four months from today. So that's that listing period that I was telling you about. It's four months. I can never remember whether it's four, two, six. So it's actually four months. So four months before your listing will expire 
and depending on whether you have it on manual or auto renew and you can see here I chose auto renew so they're saying we'll auto renew every four months at 20 cent per listing right and you can change your listing at any time without having to repay for this that's why I can go back and add in pictures and things like that so I'm just gonna hit publish okay and then you can see my listing is here my content creator shirt and then if I choose here choose this um, icon I mean gear icon go down and I can view my shirt on Etsy by clicking that and this is what my listing looks like so we've got that picture shows up nice and big and we can scroll through and see there's the sweatshirt there's the t-shirt this is my size shirt my size chart for my sweatshirt size chart for my t-shirt and again I'm gonna go back and add a size chart for the hoodie or I'm gonna take the sweatshirt off and just make another listing I'm still in debates about that again I've got the colors and you'll notice that for here I only chose white and black um, and sand so I am going to actually take this off because I'm not offering this shirt in my normal colors so I'm gonna take this off and I probably won't add a a um, color chart here because again I'm showing pictures I'm showing what the shirt looks like in black and I could possibly show what it looks like in white so I'll probably just take this off altogether and then I have one where people can join my mailing list and I just take them to my website slash Etsy and they can get on my mailing list and save 30% so that's um, just a, a nice to have and you can see this is the title these are the keywords we chose these were the sizes that we chose here are my colors white black and sand and then you can see where it's showing that it's handmade because of those options that I selected the materials it, you can see that it's screen there's screen print and then here is that description that I use on all of my listings that I, I copied and pasted and feel free to choose anything out of my description that you like um, I know it's kind of hard thinking of what you want to put there so feel free to borrow any of that information and then you can see estimated arrival information I set mine to free shipping so cost of ship is free and on my shop I for my returns and exchanges I say not accepted but I do everything I can to fix an order if any of my customers have a problem so I, I use that option and again my shipping profile um, dictates that it delivers to the United States and it's starting at 30096 that's my zip code from Duluth Georgia and there you go so that is my listing and that is how you create a listing that sells again remember the title and the tags most important so there you have it that is exactly how you list your products on Etsy so they can be found in Etsy search and you can make more sales I hope you found these tips valuable and like I promised I've got something special for you all you have to do is look down in the description click on the link give me your email address and I'll send it your way but before you do that I'd like for you to watch the video right below me yes that one right there Click on that video because I've got some more cool stuff to share with you. I'll meet you over there.